Hello, I'm Joe Kistel, and this is not a video that I was planning on making, but I figured I'd put this together in hopes that maybe someone will find it useful if they find themselves in a similar unfortunate situation. You see, recently I dropped a perfectly good full-frame Nikon camera into a brackish creek where it sat underwater for probably two minutes or so. My camera fell, bounced here, bounced down here, and fell right in there. And I had to jump in, fish it out of the muddy, nasty water. So this video, I'm gonna take you through the process of what I did to try to remedy the situation and let you know what the outcome was. The main steps of this are gonna be, get the thing out of the water as soon as you can, remove the battery as soon as you can, that's very important, and then to dry and clean the thing out, and then to not put the battery back in until you're completely sure that your electronic equipment is dry. The first thing I did, I was going to try the magic rice trick. The concept behind this is, is that rice um, kind of works as a desiccant, whereas it's going to be drier than the moisture in your electronic piece, so that dryness should, by osmosis, suck out some of the moisture. I went ahead and I got a big bag of rice, I wrapped my camera in a piece of shirt or cloth, zip tied that up, put it in a Tupperware container, and then buried it in rice. And I did the same thing with the lens as well. And what I was going to do was I was gonna make myself leave the camera sit untouched for a full week before I took it out of the rice. So after about five days of this, I had been doing a lot of thinking, and I just figured that this whole rice thing was just too optimistic of a hope. I just didn't think there's any way that the rice was gonna be able to get the water out at least in a fast enough fashion to avoid this camera from future damage. So I figured what I was going to have to do was open the camera up and take pieces out piece by piece so I can dry and clean them independently. So I'm going to show you how I completely dismantled my Nikon D600 and cleaned the individual parts. So the first thing I want to do is remove the bottom panel from the camera. There's several screws here. I loosen those up and I remove the bottom panel. Then what I wanted to do was remove the plate that holds the tripod mounting bracket. In this case there's four screws, I just back those out and pop that panel out. And at this point I'm already seeing some moisture and some debris in the camera itself. So as I'm going through this dismantle process, I'm taking alcohol and Q-tips and cleaning up any moisture and debris that I can find. Alcohol works well because it um, has affinity for water and it will dry out very quickly. So that's why I chose to use alcohol to clean. Next, I wanted to remove the front panel of the camera. So there's two screws in the front, I removed those, and then hidden underneath the flash were two more screws. So I backed out, there's four total screws, and then popped off that front panel. Now with a couple of these panels open, I could see that I had some debris lying on the paper towel underneath the camera. So I went ahead and I kind of shook the camera up a little bit at this point, and some more debris fell out. I decided I'd go ahead and swap out that dirty paper towel with a new one just to kind of keep a clean surface as best I could. Now I want to remove the main grip from the camera and I think there's four screws there and there's one tricky one that was inside the battery compartment. Anyway, I just had the back there screws out and then that panel popped right off. So the next thing I want to do is remove the back cover and this was a little involved. There's a lot of screws here, some hidden. So the first thing I did is remove the eyepiece. Under the eyepiece there's a couple screws. Then I actually had to take, there's a decal over the diopter adjuster knob had to pop that off and remove that screw. Then there's a couple screws underneath the camera, and then I had to actually peel the rubber grip off, and there's two screws under there. Once all those screws are out, I can pull the back panel off. I went ahead and removed the next eye cover piece. To remove the metal guard, I think there was two screws left, so I loosened those up and I popped that metal guard right out. Next, I wanted to remove the remaining side piece, so I think there's one screw holding this in place. I popped that out, and then I had to be very careful because there was a little electric plug here, so I had to carefully remove that plug and pop that whole piece out of there. I noticed it was moist and dirty, so I went ahead and took some time here to clean with alcohol. Next was the top piece, so what I wanted to do here is there's two screws on the side. I loosened those up, and then there's a couple cables I had to remove to completely remove the top piece. And again, at this point, I'm finding more moisture and debris, so I'm continuing to clean with alcohol as I go. I notice underneath the camera where the top piece was, was kind of dirty as well, so I go ahead and I kind of thoroughly dab the camera where I'm finding dirt and moisture with alcohol at this point. Now we're into the guts of the camera, and I wanted to go ahead and remove that main circuit board. So to do this, I had to remove a few screws, and then I had to carefully release the ribbon cables that were tied to it. 
Once that was done, I could pop the circuit board out. So now we're down to the circuit board that's holding the image sensor assembly. So I backed some of those screws out and I could pop that circuit board out, but I had to undo a ribbon cable as well. So now I had the image sensor separated from the camera. This was about as far as I wanted to go with the disassembly. Um, I wanted to get to the image sensor, make sure that it was clean and or dry, and that was kind of the most important thing. And then I could actually see you know, the shutter mechanism of the camera as well, and I could manually clean it at that point. Now that I had the image sensor out, I went ahead and I investigated it. There's actually several filters built onto the image sensor, so I removed a couple more screws to undo the assembly, and there's a little moisture under there, so I let them dry out, and then I cleaned the top filter a little bit with some alcohol and Windex. Okay, so now that the whole camera was disassembled, I went ahead and made sure the parts sat out for a while to dry. For some of the bigger parts, like the back that contained the LCD and the viewfinder, I went ahead and I used the dryer on a low setting for several minutes to help drive any remaining moisture out of the camera. Everything dry, I went ahead and I reassembled the camera. I simply just reversed the steps that we already covered. After I put the last panel back on, I went ahead and I tried to fire the camera back up. And darn it, it didn't fire up. But then I realized I didn't put the battery in it. So then I put the battery in it, turned it on, and voila, that camera had life. I was really stoked about this. And believe it or not, the camera's working fine, and I'm actually using it right now to record this. I hope none of you have to ever deal with this. If you do, all I can say is this is what I did, and knock on wood, it worked for me. I largely lucked out, but I think the measures I took really helped. I don't think just leaving it in rice would have been the way to go. So, hope you all enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe Kistel. Yeah! Now, the lens that was attached to the camera is kind of a different story. I also tried to disassemble that because the mud and water got in between all the lens elements. So I disassembled the lens and tried to put it back together, but it's still real dirty, so I'm hoping I can deal with that too. Here's the lens. Unfortunately, I don't know if I'm going to be able to save the lens because it's got water you know, in between the lens elements, so that 